an Azure ARM template deploying an Event Hub, an ADX cluster, an ADX database, tables in the database, a data connection between the Event Hub and the database, all in one single standalone ARM template, no storage account. Hi, this is the Azure Data Explorer Shorts with Vincent from the Azure Data Explorer Group. Today, I wanted to show you a quick Azure template that allows you to deploy not only your cluster, your database, but also an event hub and a data connection on your database to consume the event hub events, all in one single ARM template, thanks to a new feature we're gonna talk about. So first, let's find the quick start Azure template. You don't know that site, very useful when you're looking for example and how to use ARM templates. You can see here I'm looking for Custo. There's, there aren't that many. This one is the one we're going to look at. And it's a one-click deployment, so we can just click on it. And here we are. So there are a bunch of different parameters, but you can leave them all to default. The only thing we need to specify is the subscription and the name of the resource group, which I'm going to call template2. And the rest, as I said, we can leave it as is. And here, that's going to chuck away and deploy what we want to deploy. So while this is deploying, let's look at this new feature I told you about. For that, we're going to go to the resource definition of ARM templates. All those links are linked below. If we scroll down a little, we should find Custo somewhere. If you're not familiar with a Custo ARM template models, basically we have a cluster. Cluster can have databases. Databases can have data connections and they can have scripts. So that's not new. What is new is that now you can pass the script inline. Before that, we needed to pass a script URL pointing to a storage account and a SAS token. Of course, that introduced friction. You needed to create your storage account before, copy your script in there create a SAS token, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have it in line. Also, we made the force update tag much easier to use. Actually, you don't need to use it anymore. Basically, if you deploy with a new script content, we're going to deploy it. If you deploy with the same script content twice in a row, we won't deploy it a second time to save resources on your cluster. And basically, that's it. So that's a script that you pass as a child to your database. So let's see how we did that over here. Let's go browse on GitHub. And we can see a couple of files. The first one, Azure Deploy. Let's look at that one, Azure JSON Deploy. Right off the bat, we can tell something is a bit funny, like we have some metadata with generator in it. It tells us that this file was probably generated, and it was. <laughs> so let's keep looking at it. And you'll see that the resources are all, all in a bizarre order. Uh, but the one I wanted to look at is the script. So the script is a child of the database that depends on the cluster in the database and the script content is over here and is in line like this so you get the comment here carriage return then a create merge table with uh, one column of type dynamic etc etc so that's the way to do it with a json arm template which is the traditional arm template it works we would suggest if you use that to pass your script content as a parameter. So you can have your KQL file on the side and maintain it separately. But I'll show you an easier option if you're into Bicep template. So Bicep, Bicep is to ARM template what TypeScript is to JavaScript. It's basically another language built on top of it that just transpiles into JSON template. So everything we write here is transpiled into the Azure deploy.json file. And that's what you've seen. Bicep tends to be more terse, more compact, and much easier to write if you give yourself like the two or three hours of learning how to write it. So you can see here, I got my parameters. Here we got uh, Event Hub namespace with uh, Event Hub and a consumer group for Custo because Custo needs its own consumer group. Now we have the cluster and we give the cluster an identity. So a managed service identity or MSI. We have a database and under the database, we have a script. And in the script, we pass this file script KQL. So we do load context. And that's probably the main reason why I use bicep here, because it's much easier to manage the script with bicep because we got this function. And when it's transpiled, the script that KQL gets transpiled with it inside a JSON. So it's very convenient. We'll look at the script KQL just afterwards. Here we got the data connection. 
So we created the event hub, we created a cluster in the database. Now we're creating a data connection on the database pointing to the event hub over here. We say we want to have the in queue time as event hub system property. We're using the manage identity to connect to event hub and we're using this mapping that's defined in the script.kql. So everything is in the ARM template and because we're using dependencies, it's all executed in the right order. And just for good measure, we give access to the cluster identity to the event hub so it can read events from there. It's quite important. Now let's look at the script.kql. Of course, it's a simplistic one. We create a table with one column called document of type dynamic. Then we have an ingestion mapping where we basically just map the entire document to the column called document. And finally, I override the ingestion matching policy so that I get quick feedback when I insert a document or an event in event hub so they can get ingested very quickly. We don't suggest you do that in production. It's really great when you do debugging. So good. And that's it. We come back to the portal, do a quick refresh. Everything is hunky dory. I got my clusters deployed. If I look at the different databases, I got my Custo database. If I look at the data connection for the database, there is this event connection pointing to the event hub I just created. Oh, there you go, I didn't finish deploying. That's why I didn't see my data connection. And if I look at it quickly, I see everything. I see that I import the enqueue time and I'm using that mapping. Great. Now let's go back to the database. I have a raw event. So right off the bat after this deployment, I have my table and of course it's empty. So now I'm gonna go to Visual Studio Code to send an event. And to do that in Visual Studio Code, I'm using the plugin Azure Event Hub Explorer, and I'm gonna send a message. And I won't go overboard here. It's gonna be a simple JSON document, value 42. Sending a message, sending has been sent successfully. So let's go back to my browser, and within about 10 seconds, this thing should be in. Boom. So you see, one ARM template, got end-to-end -end deployment, readily available. If you're not comfortable using Bicep, use JSON. If you are comfortable using Bicep, but for some reason you're forced to use JSON, you can look at the Bicep CLI commands and you have the build command that will allow you to take your Bicep and basically transpile it into a JSON file. Oh, that's all I had for today. So as usual, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. Always happy to exchange with you. Otherwise, please follow us on those different social media platforms. And until next time.